Sure, sure, sure. You guys want to take that nice new shiny Nova, go down to stun form, leave me here all night with a little tank light on and no food. Now come on. Anyway, we have the car. We're going to load that sucker up. And we're going to go to Mario's for pizza. And then we're going to have some fun. George has his big tsunami here. And the fish have their food. Hey, Bert and Ernie. Time to get this. Okay, bring the plane and that stuff over here. We'll get loaded up. So, uh, now the leaves are falling in Jersey. Oh yeah, yeah, the trees are turning red and orange. Watch him hit the watch him hit watch him hit the exit way here. Bang! There goes the Nobla. Okay, stick it in there. Hold on, Park Air. that thing blowing out of his <laughs> Listen to this. Kenny, Kenny <laughs> won't admit to this on camera, but we left my house. Yeah. I handed him the camera. We got the Marios. Yeah. Camera's still running. Ah. And all we talked about for half an hour was George, so we had to erase the whole thing. <laughs> How you doing? Right. Hey, Wendy. Hal, come here. Check this out. You won't believe this. Dun, 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 dun. I am. Come here, Al. Tell me this isn't the coolest plane you've ever seen. <laughs> Oh, no, that's to go along with uh, Banjok's uh, flights. We're going to blow Banjok yeah. out of the water next week. Yeah. Yeah. Was that a big snake or something? Tsunami. 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 It's big tsunami. Rough, yeah. yeah. I was asked to bring it so I crossed it. I figured Orgy would get a big kick out of seeing it. Yeah. Ah, shut those dogs up. Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. You want to put the wing in? Look at this, it looks like a lionel train. <laughs> I'm no blur. You got enough light? Probably not. That's cool. We broke, that, we broke a piece off. Oh! <laughs> I know a guy that can fix anything. You don't have to worry. <laughs> Orgy's going to walk in. He's going to flip out. <laughs> so, Wendy, we flew down to... Uh, where did we fly that time? <coughs> down to San Juan? Oh. This woman had a video camera. I had a really? window seat. And she sat the whole flight in front of me like this. Ah, uh, She was like filming a Wendy of... Oh, filming the, it gets better. Filming the, the clouds. <laughs> Are you sure you guys have done this before? What? You didn't bring any masking no. tape? No. Oh my god. So, yeah, yeah. John Brodak's gonna fire you yeah, in a I minute. It was a Man, I see. We're gonna need a new boss. Look at the little pilot he's got here. Actually, Notice the little dashboard he made. He actually made this at his own house. Switches. Switches, yeah, just like the Sea Fire video. What a guy yeah. he is. Little Would pilot. Would you want me to bring it up? We were going to take I will steal an idea in a minute flash. Well, that's right. Please do not cut. Huh. Is that made to order? Is a kid not good? What's a pain? It's, uh, there are some glitches. Several. The Corsair, boy, you should have brought the Corsair. We could have these things yeah. made or something. Yeah. You shouldn't go to a five slot with a 60 in it. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of that? I'm telling you the way now. We're on the video sitting right underneath when Banjak comes zipping around. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was going to white knock your head off. Yeah, that was well, good. good thing you're short. See, that's... Yeah, Michael yeah. Jordan would have been in trouble. Ooh. Flight Street. That was... It was double, right? Plans, double double. Sand, uh, Get some sandpaper. We'll sand yeah. it down, George. He puts 80 pounds of pressure in the gun, the line blows off, hits him in the head, <laughs> breaks the right? cup. It's a good thing you didn't have 80 pounds of pressure. <laughs> out the shed in my driveway <laughs> yeah. and I have a line coming from that <laughs> down to my cellar to my regular in the cellar where I spray okay so the regular is set at 25 20 pounds whatever it is so now 
Uh, so now the air compressor, the regulator has I had that cranked up to 80 pounds. It gives you full pressure to go to the regulator itself. So now that I wanted to spray the plane in the backyard, I forget about this. <laughs> and I put my gun on the quick connect, and I go to spray. Uh, I'm using paint like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I put my spray gun down. 80 pounds. And you know, you heard of Murphy's Law. We have to well, there's Venturini's observation of Murphy's Law, who states Murphy was an optimist. <laughs> what happens, the gun shoots out of the quick connect. The gun takes off. <laughs> The gun breaks right there with a with a with a uh, the tank hits the I don't know the little, little filling there. Snap the right off. You know, <laughs> it's not made to, to play soccer with George. Anyway, <laughs> look, you had two guns, so set. Well, now that you started experimenting, next time I want you to blow 120 pounds. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it together. Yeah. Instead of going right in front of me, and I've got a, I have to put on a yeah, couple of things, a lot of and juice. So, and so it's not a thing that I like it. Is that wing permanent? Uh, no, it's really no, no, I just got it stuck on it. Two power that I had on it. Yeah. 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 We used it as a plus. Yeah. This, this whole section, I just broke a piece off. I hit the door when I got it. Yeah. I put one of Hampshire's offset. Bring in a nobler, Bob. No nobler? No nobler. Oh! It's all in pieces. The plane in, in, in the pylon. Well, it had a head on the pylon. So normally they're not in the junior somewhere. Oh, that's all the note. They said, when we went to the bridge of the you want to hang it. They'll use George's wing for a carrier deck here, I think. Pick up. Pick up. You can call for that, didn't you? It's too tough for people to learn how to do it. Oh, he's got an obler, all right. That's the bad play, see? All right. All right, it's a nobler, that's all that matters. Put them together, maybe they'll mate. Yeah, we'll get a half no blitz. Doug, after you find a Is this the, uh, held up pretty good, right? Yeah. I got, I wish you would have brought it. I have to tell you, I'm really disappointed you didn't bring yours, because I wanted to show the Phillips. I'm devastated, in fact. I did pour. I left a message on your machine. <laughs> he still doesn't know if I'm pulling his chair. <laughs> I like your canopy better than mine. I got that little I'll sell you that canopy, canopy $25. I got that little stupid. I'll even give you a Kenny's Pilot down here. You were supposed to give me a canopy. You were midgerly. Midgerly, not And then he sent you. to give him a canopy? That's mine, because he sent it to you. I was going to give him a canopy. That's the good old. Okay, put the uh, put the ones that are appropriate. This is the, the circle burner scale meat. Yeah. We don't want to see any of the handshake ones, just the aeroplanes. Is it good with the box? This is in Peterborough? No, this is not in Peterborough. And we're trying to get some straight information here. There it is, something else. Oh my god, check it out. Carrier shit. Get at it. I'm trying to get these on, on the tape before the meeting starts. The usual twin here. The yeah. Scobito. It kind of offsets the offset. I got the box. Yeah. 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 Drug deals going on. Yeah. Yeah.
deal. He's taking us home this weekend, and when he comes back, he's going to have a better cockpit and hit in the sea fire. Or else. Or else. I think he cut it out of the sea fire while I was having lunch today. Uh, yeah, I cut up, uh, removed some instruments from the switches from the sea fire. Windy really won't notice the next spray. Yeah, he won't notice. <laughs> so far, the Robert Sabatino, by mistake, thought he was picking up Penthouse Magazine, and it's the catalog to Brodax Noble. <laughs> A lot of nice Penthouse pets in there, Rob. <laughs> you like that? That's not a fashion novel. Not a fashion, it was a dumb idea. Very The only reason they ponder that. Uh, I've been in touch with a couple of people about that and have some suggestions later on about how to do that. Okay, Frank, why don't you get up here and tell us about your adventure? There were 21 planes entered in this contest, and the workmanship was phenomenal. And a lot of people uh, scratch broke them. And Mr. Luciano saw has a couple of old plastic cows lying around, but no, no kits. So they had a beauty contest, a static dis display, a, a P-47, which was magnificent, won a beach stagger wing, which was a, one of his kits, was second. And I was lucky enough to be third with the ME-109, so that was kind of fun. And uh, then they had speed, and uh, I won that one. Uh, 30 well, I asked this fellow beforehand, what is the you were playing with the least amount of drag? He said, build the 109 because that one was no drag compared to my other kits. And I did uh, 10 laps in 30.6 seconds. Oh, what kit was that? It was a, it was a, a scientific kit. Scientific. This contest was only scientific kits and only solid wing and solid fuselage, nothing that's built up. And yet these guys, when they flew stunt, they did almost a whole pattern with these things, including inside and outside loops, figure eights, wing overs, uh, not so much inverted, but they did magnificent stuff with these planes. And you have, there are people down there in Virginia who can make a big B049 sing, and they know every little nuance of how to hop them up and make them run properly. Basically, you put, put a, uh, an extra gasket in, you take the screen out from the back of the tank, you put a different rubber gasket on inside in the tank, Little tricks you can make the engines run more reliably. And when they were first designed in 1955, they were very good. And then with each crop, they become less reliable and less powerful. So, uh, I used one that was a fairly new baby, and it was allowed. But you couldn't use a Black Widow or anything else. So I had a uh, stunt master that I flew, and I didn't have any engines that ran properly after my one. So I put in a Black Widow, and they said, well, that's not fair. I said, when you fly, see me fly stunt, the engine will be irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I finished seventh in stunt. There were also seven people in stunt. But I actually did some, some moves with the thing. And we know it's in that And I called the quits. Are those so, kids available? Those kids are only available from collectors. They're just... Where was this? I, I wasn't aware they even had this event. This was September 20th in Lorton, Virginia, which is where the uh, Amtrak stops, the auto train. train. And they actually wanted to have an article go to in the model aviation and was rejected. Walter Luciano was a phenomenal guy. He's 75 years old. He looks great with his uh, hairpiece on there and the thing. But he is a down-to-earth guy. He was phenomenally talented. Wrote 60 books, published 500 model airplane articles, and he did it as a hobby. His main job was to design uh, ship hulls. He's a brilliant guy and uh, very down-to-earth. And if they have it again, I'll let you know because. Uh, I have lots of scientific hits, plus you can just copy the plans. You can build them from the plans. They're full-size plans. And except for the plastic cowl, it's not difficult to co copy them. <laughs> <laughs> the whole first half of the presentation is in the crapper. Just kept it out of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone all over again. It was practice. No, he's not. No, you gotta, you wanna, I got to say one thing. Honest to God, Ken and I, we were friends long ago. We worked on the newsletter together. I hadn't seen him in seven years. When he came back to my house, the, my first uh, thought was, oh, God, yeah. he's back. <laughs> but it's been a lot of fun to be with. I feel like even my wife is he's like growing on her a little bit. Oh, my God. I even said she likes funny oh body, so I know she might be getting old. Anyway. <laughs> This this piece has probably saved me. There's probably at least 20 or 30 pieces made. You have one. I know Rich will have one. 
that people have called me up on the phone and said, gee, oh, that Spitfire turtle deck, oh, where can you get four pound wood? And I'm such a nice guy, I usually make them one. Or I lend them the mold, which is my first choice, because I like people like you to learn. How hard was it to do it? Not difficult at all. And it really does save you a lot of time, saves you a lot of work. And when you make kind of a generic, well, I'm sure this would fit an SV11 or a Paul Walker 11 or whatever. This is, this is kind of a generic shape. I plan on using the new plane this year using all molds. I'm not going to have one block. Because I now have a, speed, a Spitfire and a Seafire. I have one turtle deck plane, one bubble canopy. Unless there's a Spitfire that I've never seen before, I hope I can use these things over and over. Yeah. Your Spitfires are military. Aren't there any unlimited racers that are Spitfire? Yeah, this is one thing. Maybe some of the scale guys here can help me out. There's a plane called the G-Fire. It's all red. It's privately owned. And it's been, I, I'm not familiar with it. I only have one picture of it. But it's one I really would like to get like documentation on. Um, well, it's hard for me that you should pull me up to the bar and write the guy a check to it's a, you the document. It's a late model. The whole world goes through the whole canopy. Uh, then they put the wings on and painted it all red. But, but what happens is, in England, like the Battle of Britain Museum, they really frown on cutting these things up to make war. In other words, it, you know, it, it, it's a macho thing. You have a P-51 and you're a millionaire and you go out racing. In England, you're an asshole. If you take a good one, there's only 50 left in the world. And if you take one up, cut it up for an ego trip, I think they really put, and that's the only one I've ever seen is that one pulled it. It's got G-Fire written on the side of the road. Oh, yeah. So there may be one. There may be two. There may be ones I've never seen. And I've heard of them racing them at Reno, but they weren't fast enough. They weren't competitive with Mustangs and stuff. So maybe they just did it for demonstration. But what they do have, an interesting side note, Making contact with the Battle of Rip Museum, the people are so friendly and nice. They've sent me videos, they've sent me t-shirts, hats, all kinds of crazy stuff. And they, I think, I'm not sure, there's a thing what they call the Fly Pass. There's a magazine called Fly Pass. Yep. And there's, they have like an event where they get all the Spitfires together and demonstrate them and have these flyovers. And, and that's, I guess, the equivalent of our you know, I mean, you may know more than I do. Uh, but the people have been so friendly. Absolutely, they answer every letter. They answer it with a packet of pictures and brochures, pamphlets. It's, it's really nice to them. They have videos that I have on four or five different ones. Um, but like I said, I think their main concern is, I think they're basically looking at restoring these things to as they were in World War II and not making Reno Air Race 20 cars or whatever out of it like we did with Bearcats. It was flying museums, kind of like yeah, yeah, pr probably the same. But I mean, it's it's whenever I've asked the question, were there any race that fire that oh, <laughs> well, like you don't want to know, you know, it'd be like I don't know what the equivalent thing would be. But, but anyway, I'll pass this around. These are things that I anybody in the club that would like to come over to my house Monday night, we're going to start the first week of November and make a piece with this mold right down there. Then you could then come to the club with the mold, and I'm sure Rich will. And demonstrate it takes 10 or 15 minutes to do it. Robert, you need to do it. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, these are things. The object of most of this. The object, okay. The object of most of this is not to make different airplanes, but to make planes that don't take so long to build. Because the world has changed. I think everybody here is basically in the same position I am. You don't have unlimited amounts of free time. It's hard to dedicate two or 300 hours to a project. But the equivalent thing is just to make a moment apart. So I'm lying across the wall line the last three years is to make planes that are very easy to put to build. And we've been able to make these Spitfires and Seafires so fast that with the molds, I can make that a lot of them today. The only thing is blocks and blocks and carbon, but it was an idea. It was two weeks to make a body. And I made, I made three of them. So I'll pass this around and I'll just go on. Uh, the wires on there, without the wires, it's very difficult to get the fit between the block and the, um, the hot. Now, I don't know that somebody's invented that before I did, but, but that, when the first time I thought of doing it that way, and I tried it, it absolutely makes it easy to do. You, you can't mess. And you glue a piece of sandpaper down, a sanding belt is good. Just contact cement with a glass or a two by four and just about three slides on 80 grit paper and 
drop, leave the soil dust on, drop it on, hit it with CA, you're done. It's finished. And the nice thing is now you can go make another one. It's exactly the same and exact. Like an example would be Robert's Noble. If he wanted to make another one, well, the, the next one will be exactly the same. Well, when you part of a block, one might have a point, one will be round, the canopy doesn't fit. But with this, they're all going to be within a silly amount. Now, Rich wanted to take some carbon mat, put it in between two thin sheets. We've kind of experimented with that. And that's one way to do it. You can put glass cloth in between. Um, I'm trying to think what else we did. We did a glass cloth. I made it with a little ridge on the top of a piece of carbon so you could squeeze it. Uh, but basically, it's so easy to do. And, and I think it has more applications. In other words, the less time you have to, to spend on this, the more important it is to have all these shortcuts that go into it. Now, the, the second thing, Ken's Nobler has a fiberglass college. Anybody who's ever made an Nobler knows you sit down on Saturday morning and about three weeks later you have a can of the cowling that is really difficult to do. What I wanted to do, this is one we made for Dave Midley. This fits on his card and all it's his personal little shape. So from the last three years, one of the things that I've done is everybody I've known that's made a cowling, I've convinced them to, at this point in time, when this is a solid piece of wood, to basically bring it to my house, put a couple coats of oil primer on it, pay $25 for a batch of molding rubber and make a mold of that cowling. The next day, the rubber cures, you can make this little fiberglass piece. Now you still have the cowling and you have this. So the investment is about $25 to have an unlimited lifetime supply of cowling. That is a lot of advantages. I can make these much lighter than you can make a piece of wood, but they tend to get a little on the rippling side, and almost every time you do that, you need nose weight anyway. So I wind up using two or three layers of cloth, not trying to make it as light as possible, but it's real durable, and I'll throw this to Al. The reason is it doesn't matter if you catch it. So you can do it. I want to catch it. He was dropping the woodwork. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, that's the advantage. Is as you're going by or you have a rain on, it's not a problem. when you when. Like the Nobler, every time we turn it over and hit the ceiling, bomb, the light, you know. So, now, the, the proof is, uh, and I'm almost never willing to go out on a limb for something until I've done it and it's a year old. The Spitfire is two years old, it won the concourse. Seafire is one year old, it won the concourse. I took those two cowlings off, took them off, wiped them, and looked for a crack. None. So, if they haven't cracked in two years of my flying, then that might be the equivalent of Week. Why don't you do a whole fuselage like that? The reason for not doing a whole fuselage, the labor to make the mold would not be the problem. Then there's several reasons that I can see is bonding wood to fiberglass is a very, very tricky thing when you're talking about a motor mount. Yeah. And I've thought of different ways of doing it. If I wasn't involved in this machine shop business that I have, I would devote maybe a month to doing it. There's a guy up in New England named Vic Brennan, who's one of the top people in the world. He offered to help me make the mold. Um, would be nice if we had a mold or a noble body. Uh, that's one of the thoughts I had. Um, again, it's, Art Adamson has done it. He's been very successful. I think his boy won the match with the plane that he made. I'm not sure. Right. I might be, yes. And the kid from Florida, the Jim Lee's son, Todd. Uh, they had matching planes that were molded far. They were very nice. Um, I, I can't think of any reason other than the fact that it would be a labor-intensive thing to make the mold. I don't think it would be impossible. Uh, now, Art's son makes pylon racers as a side business, so he probably, in other words, knows a hundred times more than I do right now. What it would mean, like with the cowlings, the first couple I made were too thick, too thin, getting the mix right, putting the cabocil in the right amount, it's too thick, the resin's too thin, different resins. It, there's a million things you can change, and once you get a formula that you're happy with, this is one I was going to throw away. This is not a, a good, this is made out of polyester resin, what, what you call Bondo. And it's not as strong as when you make them out of epoxy. It has epoxy resins that you put in the oven for two hours and they get a lot stronger. So there's a lot, I'm guessing in the next year, we, we already have Cardinal Spitfire, Seafire, SV11, Middle East thing, this looks like an Aries, you probably could use it on Aries. But you'd be amazed that if you make a cowling mold and you go to another plane, almost all the planes, except for the parting line, the width doesn't change, 
and the spinner diameter doesn't right. change. So you almost could go up to whatever plow, ballerina, and drop this on. You always make the cowling first and then sand the body into the cow. You don't make the body and then make the cowling fit. So with that in mind, if anybody can show that cowling off later, we made that one yesterday. I made a couple extra ones. I think, did we bring an extra one? Uh, no. Just so you don't have to take it off. No, I can take it off in a minute. Uh, I think the combination of molding some of the parts in combined with this, what it would do for somebody like Robert is cut the building time down significantly and still have a very nice plane. You still wouldn't have a profile. You have a full body plane with a nice cowling. Uh, the removable landing gear, the aluminum gear make it a lot nicer. Uh, by modernizing some of these things, now what he did with his Noble was make a 52 Noble with all these modern features. It's bulletproof. I mean, I don't see the counterpoint to it unless you have a personal love of a certain design, a certain color, a certain way. So these little things have all passed that around. All true going to be, uh, I think there's, there's a future in the hobby for some of this. Another thing, I, I don't know if anybody's seen this, this is the mold to make Spitfire landing gears. I've made about 20 pair a gear off of this mold already. Extremely easy to make this kind of a mold. It's a single face. This is, this is probably $10 of molding rubber. You need to make a set of landing gear with all the details. Of course, you need a left and a right. I'm going to go home. And then you run the wire out one side and out the bottom. Get it nice and flat. Pour the rubber in until it's even with the top. When it's done, you never have to carve sand. They never crack. They never break. Um, and anybody wanted to make a set of, like, for instance, if you wanted to put these on the Noble, where they had this good part of little scissors and everything. With no glass in there, Wendy? Just the resin? No, no. There's a balsa wood box. No, no. I mean, when you pour it. It's just, just the resin. Just the resin. And what I do is I rough up the wire, and I use a material called Cabasil to thicken the epoxy so that it's it just a thicker viscosity. The, the thinner viscosity, I, I just find it, you know, it's, it drools out of the mold and everything. But this acts almost like Bondo, and you can press it into the corners. Cabasil usually is used to get corners and edges real nice on molds. And it's very inexpensive. A whole a peanut butter drum is only three or four dollars. But this might be good on somebody's scale model. The thing again, once you make that mold, if you have a Mustang or a Spitfire or a, a, like an Orgy Corsair, like what we could do if we wanted to is take Orgy's Corsair, take a finished landing gear and make a mold. And you'd never have to make another one. Once you make one, you're done for, that's a lifetime thing. The spinners that go on a Spitfire, I have a bunch of molds for them. But, but the one that I use over and over again, I've made probably 25, 30 spinners out of the mold. And I know they're all going to be exactly the same shape. They're going to, there's, there's no like carving operation involved in it. And these are really, by the way, these are, you can look at that. Here. These are really crude molds. These are not like professional quality molds, but they're plenty good for what we're using them for. Because you're going to sand the parts anyway. See, like the, the surface in it doesn't matter that it's rough. You're going to sand it into the, the, the plane anyway. So there's no real advantage to having it a glass finish like you'd have on a Corvette. It, it's insignificant. You're going to sand it and hang it anyway. So I have a couple other things, and then let me just see which one's here. This is the mold that makes that cowling for anybody who'd like to pass it around. So that's some carbon. But don't rub your head with your fingers here. This still has some carbon razor blades sticking out of the edge. <laughs> <laughs> so I found out you had a knife the hard way. And I found out the hard way. That was a tough lesson. Another thing. If anybody would like to do a little testing, this is a material that the EAA approves for use on home of their planes. I don't remember who we got this from. Did I get this from anyone? No, Somebody it. sent this to me as a sample. I was skeptical. I looked at it and I said, yeah, 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 yeah. And then we, did, we put it on Robert's Noble. His thoughts are better than mine. Is that fillet material? Yeah. So what I did is we tried it on Ken's plane tonight with the idea in mind that's what they look like when they're wet. Next week when he brings the plane here and it, it's sanded and it's got some dope on it, I was concerned about that the material is really thick. And you really, when you go to make a fillet, you have to press down on it. But the second and third time I did it, I just, it just seemed like it was easier. But the first time I thought the material was too thick. See, the thing with epoxies, it's easy to make them thicker by adding cabasil or Q-cells or any, any 
talcum powder you can put in there. Third, third works fine. <laughs> if you don't care about weight. But a thickening agent is easy to add to an epoxy resin. But when an epoxy resin is too thick, you're stuck. <laughs> you basically, you know, you're, you're up against the wall. But anyway, if you want to feel the weight of this material, it's very light. Yeah. You think the can's empty? It's, it's like yeah. all yeah. Big, we we only look out what's on Ken's plane, and I think what's on Robert's plane. But I think it's the equivalent. Those cans right there is thirteen dollars. I think that's an average model. It would be a lifetime supply. It's very, very easy to sand. I made some samples. A guy named Pat Travers, good friend of mine, Pat Travers came up. He does gun work. And he gave me a bed, it's called a bedding epoxy. Anybody that does guns knows what that is, I don't. Basically, when you read the directions, it tells you how to get the gun barrel to sit into the, the uh, stock with an epoxy resin. That's very strong and very, uh, I guess, heat resistant. So he had done the fillets on his, and by the way, his were real nice too. So what I did is I, okay, I'll, you know, especially if you don't have to pay for the samples, I'll take some. The name of this product is Acroglass, and what I did, I ran two tests. I ran a test of the material as it comes out of the tube. And this is a day old already, so it's really, it's old. you probably could sand this down. And then I added some cabasil to thicken it up. You can see it even looks different because it makes a little nicer of a fillet without sanding. But both of these materials, this is, this is relatively expensive. They call it high end epoxy. But the amount you use, one tube, <coughs> one tube, I mean, this would be $30 a quart, that's 13 But a quart lasts a lifetime. So you can pass that around. And the thing I like about this, this went on real easy. You, you really can't even stick your finger in here. That's as, I mean, I, I was poking away trying to make a dent in that. Where the other stuff is lighter, but you really can get your fingernail in it. You can, you can copy the address off the can. I think there's an 800 number. And they'll send it to you. It's, you know, the next day it's in the mail. It's no problem at all. Several people have already gotten it. The ad is, the, the address and stuff is in stunt news, but when I called them to get another can, it, it was in the mail the next day, and two days later I had it. What do you finish over? I trade it Doc, paint. Well, Robert had the floor finish, polyurethane, whatever. Yeah, but base. we tried dope over, and the dope was fine so far. See, the nice thing now about Ken's Noble is we're using it to do it in the real world. So this time next year, after it's all soaked and UV exposed, and See me next year. See, I don't like to tell people to try it now unless they're willing to become part of an experiment. But most of these experiments, they have a good, they have a good track record of turning out at least okay. You don't lose the bottle. I didn't know I was part of an experiment, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he just told me this will work fine. <laughs> <laughs> I had one. I loaned it to somebody I never got it back. When Walt found out it was loaned and not given back to me, a guy named Bob Martinez <coughs> gave me this one and he wrote on it, Windy, 1997, fabricated for Windy Ernowski, not for a loan. <laughs> so, Robert, don't borrow. Anyway, what it is, we leave a little piece of wood on here. So, you know, it's a, obviously a number 11 blade. There's a little Allen screw in here. You can make this from all scrap wood. And it allows you to set a given height for a center line. And because this is a nice flat surface, you can walk this around a whole model and find out if you're at center, 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 which we did with an old one. Um, building a wing, building a fuselage, putting a center line on, or finding equal heights. This was handy when we fixed Jim Damerell's biplane, setting the two wings to equal height. Uh, I'll pass this around. Be careful. This is a, this is really sharp. Again, these are things that cost no money. These are not the minute you find out there's something you want and it's two hundred dollars. Eh, you know, but there's all stuff you can make with scrap wood, and it works. This works just as good as a five hundred dollar machinist gauge. Um, and this is what we did with the Nova. Now this is something that. When I met Harold Price, I, I have to be honest about this. I met uh, Harold. Good, good thing he's very here. I used to go into his house at night after school. 
And Harold used to have all these cool little inventions. And every invention I saw, I said, wow, that guy really knows his stuff. Boy, he really knows. But I didn't know. He was copying it from somebody, too. Who in turn copied it from somebody? None of us have ever invented these things. These things just happen. I took all the, all the scrap wood that I had and ran it through a saw with a rib fence so that all the heights are the same and glue two pins on each one. Now you can see how this, you can pretty much figure out what's going to happen. This goes along the leading edge and the trailing edge of the wing when you're building a mobile wing. You can build a wing basically in about three hours if you have enough of these. It's scrap wood, the pins are glued in, when you're done you throw them away. You just set a, if you don't have a, a, a wood fence, you probably could just use and cut the wood, to, you know, until it's all the same shape, to build an oval wing. Instead of, if you don't want to use rods, the reason rods aren't appropriate for an obla, the airfoil is so thin in the back, by the time you cut the 3-8 hole, there's only paper showing. So by having this, you're supporting it all the way around. And by the way, all this is on video from, for anybody that's really desperate to know how to make an obla wing. It also works on cardinals, it also works on anything. But if you so look you at this through the leading edge? And trailing edge on a center line. So, so, so the whole thing, support it all and every time you want to move it you take it and move it take it and, and as soon as you have it all set to new to where you think it's all lined up one drop of hot stuff on each block when you're all done break the hot stuff so there's no money involved it's not like buying one of those expensive wing jigs or the rod even the rods can be expensive to buy and get in store these things it's no money at all and it works this worked well you can pass that around we uh I might be wrong. I think we spent about three hours framing out the wing. Because when Kajeski was by my house with the Cardinal, we did the rods and that was four hours. So it easily could be done one night after work and be in one piece. And that's... And there's, just put the leading edge and trailing edge right in. Yep. There's no question that you have a straight wing when it's done. When you're done, that wing was... We just looked down it from every angle and I said, I mean, you turn it over and see if the blocks still fit. Yeah, you, you really need about 10, but if you had 20, if you had some, uh, I'm sure they make a more significant blue number 26 plates on this if you want to be a machinist. But these work fine. You don't have to make, I guess that's the biggest point too, to make a nice model plane, a real line, like all these Corsair. You don't need a machine shop. You don't need a lathe. You don't need a bridge port. You don't need, you need about $10 worth of basic tools. And, and other than that, you don't need a lot of sophisticated stuff. U.S. Uh, yeah, I saw that. I was looking at it. In fact, I just was, I just was uh, looking at it right now. Just the night, about two years ago, a year ago, sent me these some sanding sticks for working on planes. Since then, Robert has come to the house with a box of them, so we use these all the time for sanding. Kenny picked right up on cap stripping, doing the edges of cap strips. We're going through these like water now, so you got to bring about four cases. But anyway, <laughs> this is, once you have a handful of these on the edge of the workshop, you almost don't need sandpaper. These are, I'm telling you, I was impressed. Yeah, John's got one. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but they're not as, the ones John has, these are much, much better than, than grab you by. These commercial ones that, that Robert can get. The ones Robert gets last, and the ones Bud McKnight sent me, never, they don't seem to ever wear out. The commercial ones, two swipes on plywood, and they're, they're you know, like a dog. Yeah, the most of these are made from the same. But they're hard. Oh, it's silicone carbide, then. If you do an acrylic, it's silicone carbide. This is for would you would you do those in a beauty supply? Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right. Like fuzzies or something like that. Would probably There's a beauty supply place on uh, Bloomfield Avenue in Montclair, and they have them. No, I don't know if anybody's ever had to make a set of ribs from scratch. This is the way Joanna Musco made the ribs for the Spitfire from scratch. This is. I'm guessing his labor of love, and he gave it to me. This is going to be our next year's wing. These are the templates for 57 I-beam ribs, half, half I-beams. These are done, knowing how Joe works, it probably took him an hour and a half to do each one. Look at them real close and see how accurate they are. They are really a work of what? It's made to be made on rods. It's going to be an I-beam wing that's made on rods. We still haven't finalized it, but that's what would comprise an elliptical wing set of I-beam ribs is having that 
try not to break those two M ones. Now, whenever you work with Joe, Joe and Bob Martens, we've all worked together on that Spitfire project. One of the things they do is make beautiful, accurate drawings. And every one of these, you can lay these out like the Nobler later. Every one of these is as accurate. I'll lay it out on the floor here. Why don't we put it right up here? Okay. Just so somebody can get an idea of how much work went into this. If you want to come up later and look at these, what he even did on the plans is show the canopy open and the canopy shut for that purpose. And Bob Martens may soon be in our club. He's moved from Utah to Philadelphia, and I'm trying to convince him to become part of our club. This is the layout of the ribs. You want to grab one end of that? Again, you can see how labor intensive it is. The drawings are absolutely dead accurate. And it really is, to me, this is a work of art. I could wing just how many hours of work go into just, just this before you even cut a piece of wood. It's a lot of work. Let me see what else we have in the Well, in the past, I've made well, a lot of fiberglass wheel pants. Brian Ether has made them. And I've tried to uh, convince Ken that we have this molding technology out of disposal now. Wheel pant is probably the simplest thing on earth to make. So he's starting to carve molds to make prototype wheel pants, and we'll pass one of these around. Uh, they're lighter than balsa wood. They don't get chipped and nicked and dinged. And the thing is, you can make one in 10 minutes, maybe, as opposed to carving and hollowing this, finishing it and sanding it in. So put one in each hand and figure out which is going to be the more difficult Especially nice for somebody, say, that has a profile plane where you normally wouldn't have wheel pants or a, an entry-level plane, and now you'll have the choice of, can I hope is going to be in production real soon, maybe in a couple of weeks on these. We've already got the material to make them, and we've already made a couple of little prototypes. So that's something that's not commercially available over the counter. And if anybody wanted a special set for a scale model, we could. it would only be a cost of the molding rubber. And you would only ever have to make them once and you'd be done. Right? What do you use for mold reduce? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. The way it works, the rubber, platinum cure, tin cure and platinum cure. One of them is not compatible. I don't remember which I've ever written down. One of them is not compatible with making parts with, with auto primer on. So that, that basically the rubber that actually touches the part never cures. But it's either the platinum, it's whichever is the most expensive. That's the one that that works for us. Um, the I wrote a letter to GE. I got their big catalog. I got samples of their rubber, and they said, "Well, how many you know tanker cars do you want?" And I told them I only wanted a quart. <laughs> It's a big tank of pull up in front of that. I've dealt with that. Put it right in the I've been in and I, yes. I have contact. Don't the tank are Yeah, party. if you have a contact party, party you'd be glad I'd love to have it. No, it's a GE dealer. Oh, but GE, I mean, I have plenty of people. And he'll give you samples. Oh, you get a sample. It's fun to work with. Do it at a night, you know, a demo meeting. It's very easy to use. So why don't you just go to Embarrassing Master? No, the, the, uh, the, Impression compounds. Are any of those useful? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I've never used them, so I don't know sure what they're They have some rubbery plastic things that you, uh, you know, put in the tray and now take it. When you go to Pearl Paint, there's about 20 different kinds of on the shelf where the rubber is. Uh, material they use for making masks over skin, uh, different applications, and then there's mold making rubber. They, they list it as a, the number is 7030 when it works good. Uh, and they make some that, that, that is not. You need cure. You need a release agent on it. Uh, I tried that. Yeah, you can make that work, but spraying that PVA on all the time, it's, it's so time consuming. Where the other stuff, once you buy it, it's done. You know what I mean? You just, you never, you know the part is going to come out, and you know it's going to last forever. So what I was thinking about doing now, maybe Robert will be the first guinea pig. He has, he has that look on his face like he'd like to. Because a nobler part is so small, it actually goes from here to here. If we, if we were to make another nobler on a Monday night thing, I would make this piece out of fiberglass and not even make it out of balsa wood. So I could make it out of two, two layers of four ounce cloth 
And you know, it'll be bulletproof. And I'll bet it'll be just as light as balsa wood. You know, all you need to do is get a little, make a little tub, be able to drop this into the rubber, and leave it at the parting line. It's it's not a high tech thing to figure out how to do that. Uh, how many layers of balls do you put on when you when you mold the ball? One. That's it. Yeah. Well, what you do is you make the mold undersize. So, so let's say this was the part. This is the shape you really want. It's the inside. This, this is. But now I take an ink marker and just paint it. Sand off the ink. Put the ink on it. Sand the ink off. Every time you do that, you lose about a thirty second of an inch. Put the ink on. Or powder is even good. Paint. You can paint it with dope. Now you're back to raw wood. Now you drop it into the place and it's just a little bit smaller. Now if you went too far, it's not a problem. You put a piece of 30 second balsa and make a mold. Still too small? Put two pieces of 30 second. It can never be too small. So like in Robert's case, we could actually use a nobler mold to make a Spitfire. We could just, in other words, we could shim this in, in an all perfect world. We could make George's tsunami with a mold. We could just keep putting layer after layer once we establish the first curve. So I don't know where that's going to wind up eventually, but I know, I know that the gain in model aviation right now, the big gain to me is people, if you can save them time, they're all ears. If, if you approach them with a high-tech, very expensive thing, it's like some, some people are interested, some aren't. But if you could design a plane that would be able, you could build it in a weekend, that would be, and we're, I've already asked John Brodak if he's interested in that, and he's given me to go ahead to start working on it to make that plane that you can make real quick, real simple, and that it flies real good. Now I also yeah, thought of, yeah, yeah, so. what's that? Where they, one could, one could actually be attached to the body, a fiberglass piece, no carving, no sanding, no hollowing, glunk, it's on, and the other one could come off and expose the motor in a profile tank. Yeah. And you'd have about, a, you'd have talking a talking about funny car technology. Yeah. The frame is underneath, but there's this shell right. of a body around right. 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 Even yeah. when it blows off in the uh, drag race. The thing still works. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You just cut it away. <laughs> but the gain is, Mike, that I see is the, the people I talk to, except obviously for the top level competitors, the, always the complaint is they, it takes too long to build a plane. How can I get, will you build one for me, number one, no. Will you, um, can you, can you tell me somebody I can buy a plane from? No, but, but there's so many people because you're a good example. Family life, you just moved, your job, you think kids going to college. You think the ballerina will ever get that? <laughs> exactly. It took him seven years and then he doesn't finish with one noble. This one he finishes in 10 days. Just yeah, go to the art house for a week, it'll be done. Not many people that I know have like 50s time available where it was Bert and Harry and you could sit around all night on an easy chair and carve scientific fuselages or whatever. Everybody's got a minimum amount of time, so the saving is in the time. And and being able to pass it on, like to Robert or the Rich or to somebody, it's very uh, it's rewarding that you can do that because I know once that catches on and, and it's only a matter of time, you would have to be a moron to make a part of one of these and not figure it out. It wouldn't take me three times to figure it out. In other words, when, I was, when I first got involved in the machine shop business, the guy that was my partner, Joe K, he said, okay, I want to teach you about machine shop work. And I had never seen them all machine. He said, we're going to make a muscle for you. He took like a 60. He sat with a block of aluminum and squared it, chewed it, and X Y'd it, and put, drilled the holes, tapped the holes. It. And now I'm like, hey, you know, what are we going to sell this for? $2,000? It's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like the better part of a day to make a muffler in a machine shop if you don't have the right technology. He says, okay, you all done? You done? That works good? Okay. Then he programmed it into an automated machine, an NC machine. And he said, okay, let's go for coffee. and. Put the part in, we came back, it was a muffler. <laughs> Shot. <laughs> but I did. <laughs> there's, there's an awful lot of things that in the world that I see, you know, Dave Midgley is actively working on making uh, the same material you use on canopies to make wingtips for cardinals that you can just glue them on and you're done. That would be a, a nobler glue it on wingtip. Would be cool. And that's one thing I've thought of. Wheel pants. With I know how long it takes. With to built-in tip boxes and built-in. Uh, they stop breaking. Sure, sure, because they're plastic. Yeah, cool right in. Cool There's right no in. like with wood. You got to support. It. You could make the little piece right in it. Yep. I also thought if and again if there's some, we're looking for guinea pigs. 
if Robert makes an Illinois, we'll make fiberglass wing tips for your plane because then I'll have the mold with the tip weight box. We can make the two things. You can see by looking at this little, where is that little thing? That, that, it, isn't, it isn't high tech making this stuff. It takes a little time to get used to it. Basically, once you're done, then if Rich wanted to use those wing tips, done, finished. That's the nice part. And I think it's, I think within the next year, a lot of that's gonna happen. And that's what my, my program is built around the idea of trying to make it simpler and faster and easier and not so much in the direction of make it more high tech, more expensive and unobtainium, but to make it that average, not, not wanting to spend their whole life to make one plane people, can have real nice stuff, and I think it's going to happen. And if it doesn't, it'll happen a year after. It's coming, and there's no way you're going to stop it. The world isn't going toward families that have unlimited free time. It's not going to ever. We're never going to go back to the 20s and 30s and 50s where guys just sat out on a porch and sanded all night. It's never going to happen. Would you see any use for the, the real wax? What's it called? Cavasil. Cavasil. It's like cap. What is it? Florida Blue Products. The address is. It's in the last pamphlet. It's in that article about all the epoxy you use, like smooth and easy or something mm -hmm. like that. Here's what the deal is with epoxy. You can make, in the, variety, in the world of epoxies, first of all, polyester resin is the cheapest. Right. That's where you add a couple of drops to it. That's always the cheapest and, and the weakest and the heaviest. When you move from that, you can go to vinyl ester, and that's halfway between epoxy and polyester resin. When you get from vinyl ester to epoxy, now it's the most expensive and the most critical to cure ratio. In other words, polyester resin, if you roll 10% in the mix, it'll still cure. Or it'll cure before you get there. That's what I'm saying. You can set your house on fire with polyester resin. You need some heat on a cold day. Just drop the whole jar in. Uh, maybe you can say a few words about the relative dangers of some of these other products. Anything that there's a part A and a part B is toxic. You can believe who you want, but nobody wants to have any of it in the house. We have children, pets. Aren't there I have tons of it. Now. Aren't there some of the curing agents that if you've got a splash in your eye, that's it? You're probably, oh, yes. probably all of them. I mean, KP. Yeah. Oh, I mean, KP is a curing agent for, for polyester. Oh, yes. Bondo. Very dangerous. Very dangerous for your eyes. What I have down a cellar, uh, rubber gloves are a must if you're going to use any amount of it. You don't want to get it in your hands because some of it does get absorbed. But anybody that has Robert's brought over rubber gloves, I know your hands from doing the work that you do, you, they're dry. You don't want to get it into an open sore. That's where it's a problem. My hands are always chewed up from, from working anyway. Okay, so these, so these nice fillets you made for the Nova, what was the... It says right on the can, it's, it fits in... I'll no, the epoxy, the cabasol instead. The, no, what I'm saying, the epoxy, anything where you might, where you mix part A and part B, set off a chain re a molecular chain reaction, that isn't not, good for you. I'm not afraid of this stuff. Is that I just want to know which you use. Well, which epoxy did you use for yeah. distillating? Uh, the stuff that you get around the can. In the light can. But you added the cabasil stuff to that? You can, but it's already too thick. Oh, you didn't. You just use that stuff to make those stuff. Yeah, right out of the can. You can take so, a spoonful out before you go home if you want to try so it. So like if I took, uh, <coughs> I, don't know, I always find myself like when I'm painting, uh, Fuel proofing inside cowlings and stuff. I use this smooth and easy stuff, right? So, mm. can I take this stuff and, and turn that into a fillet material? Let me give you a good example. Why would you use something inside the tank that's not on the outside of the plane? Almost all of the oil goes on the outside yeah. of the plane. Yeah. I mean, I, I hear this from people who say, "I'm just making an example. You bring a few sludge to the house. I want to fuel proof the tank apart. Mix up four ounces of epoxy, pour it in, stir it, heat it with a hair dryer, drain it. It's fuel proof." The paint on the outside of the paint, the plane, is more fuel proof than the epoxy. And that, that requires some technology. That's you don't just yeah. you know, just invent that as you go along and go fly out and make a polyester prop and a blade goes and hit somebody in the head. That's that's you what it that too then. Yes, yes, yes. that has to be made two hours. Two hours at two twelve in an oven. And suppose you use the wrong temperature or you put leave it in a little too long. When you post cure epoxy, the molecules get longer and longer. When the molecules get longer, that's where you gain the strength. So you would, in effect, not have the strength gain. So you'd, have, you'd have an uncured post-cure. That's the accurate kind. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. On a prop, you'd lose a blade. In other words, when you do that, you don't say, oh, well, that's too strong. You put a thermometer in there and make sure it's... I put it in the kitchen oven with a digital thermometer. And make sure, and it's, make sure it's not 215 or 210. In other words, 
Right, that, the, the, the dial may be saying 212, but actually it's exactly. 20 in it. Exactly. Yeah. No, no, no. You, you use the oven dial and that bulb to right. check the vertical. Right. And they do. In fact, you used George's oven one time, my friend, and he had a real, that thing had a thermometer inside of, and, and one we stuck into the prop hole. Do you know what it was down at the shop? Yeah, stainless steel. Yeah. Yeah, stainless steel one, yeah. Do you have a way to stress test to pull up a prop before you have it on the plane? You give it to Robert the plane. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. No, there's really no way to test it. The stamp and the outlet and break it. Never stand in the prop arc. Here, here's an example. If you built, if you built a home built plane, if you and I would have decided we're going to build a very easy, and we make a foam shell and then we coat it, then now the way we test the wing is you take the load that it's going to carry, which in this case, let's say it was 600 pounds, and you put a plus factor of 50% in, so that would be 900 pounds. And it takes 900 pounds of sand and distribute it easily along the wing and hope that it doesn't break. If it holds, you're okay. If it holds, you can go fly. And if it breaks, you don't build another one. <laughs> you know, that it broke and your ass wasn't in the cockpit. Yeah. <laughs> no, but the, the, in aircraft, the reason you use a 50% safety factor is in, well, in other words, some people think, why not use 200%? A 50% safety factor means, yeah, we can pull 5Gs and we can, you know, in normal amounts of life. But if you made the thing that it would pull 20Gs, the plane would probably be too heavy to fly. So it is a, they, they in, in, I don't know if it's universal or just something. 50% is usually a factor when they sandbag a wing, uh, especially these composite wings. Uh, oh, yeah, you saw that. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, we have a video. Honestly, the video of some RC guy with a big four-engine, four-quadra V17. Takes four guys to pick up. They bring it out. He takes off, comes around. First lap, he's flying along, brrr. Second lap, he's flying around, brrr. Third lap, brrr. You're right about that. I've been chopping the throttles. You know this is going to go. It just goes and turns into, you're all right. In the garage, work outside, work with a fan blower, use rubber gloves, use goggles. All the things I, I that we don't do. Those things, and I... Yes. I don't know if you heard about it, but basically there's a big deal of concern about if you have to use mapaches, like you're saying, make sure you use the rubber gloves. Leads to heart conditions. Yes. Believe me. Yes. Well, all any absorbed through the skin, but the top of poxy absorbing through the skin can be done. The one person I believe out of, out of everybody, and all these can labels say this and say that, say this. There's, there's one person I contacted at Shell Oil who sold me the Epon A15 with the TETA cure agent. That's what I make the props out of. And when I spoke to him on the phone, I said, I really want to know. Don't give me this bullshit. You order a quarter resin, and you get a book that's bigger than a quarter resin of the safety hazards of this material. And I said, how much of this is legit if I use a quarter of this a year? And he says, well, you know, we wrote this for guys that are using eight hours a day, five days a week, you know what I'm saying? I mean, one day, well, I don't know that, you know, where we fit in. Like, how many cigarettes do you have to smoke before you just die? <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> that problem itself is the problem. You don't know. I mean, if you're in doubt at all or skeptical, I would say rubber gloves, uh, goggles, and a, and a flannel shirt backwards so you can't drip any on your skin. I know it can absorb through the skin. Uh, you can even go so far as to get a Scott A pack. But George is the best one. I have to tell you, being you mentioned this too, I would not have brought this up. My friend George is in, was in the is in, was in the anodizing business basically all his life. Dealt with the EPA and all the regulations and everything. And he read me. They took out the EPA book. I, maybe I'm wrong, George, but I, I always tell a story. He says, "This is a material causes cancer in rats, death in butterflies. This, that, 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 that. You go by 40, 45 pages." Uh, if you breathe it in, this happens. You get it in your eyes, this happens. If you drop it on your shoes, this happens. And it goes on and on. I mean, it's it's really, how thick is the book, George? I, there's several volumes. Oh, there's volumes. It's vinegar. Very you in literature. Hoping you'll join the EAA, I guess. But all kind of technical bulletins. They're real good about keeping track about what works, what doesn't work. They have their own standards for everything. They don't rely on industry standards. They got a website. They and they are so helpful. They will return your call. Anybody I've ever called in the EAA, I can guarantee if I call two in the afternoon, by that night I go to bed, I'll have an answer, a call, a mail, uh, something. 
They really are responsive. They're really good. Um, if you ever get a chance to go there in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, oh, yeah. it's a oh, fabulous, yeah. Yeah. A fabulous couple of days you can spend. Yeah, I told my wife it'd be fun camping out under the wing of a B-17. Yeah, she says, yeah, why don't you and Mike go? But <laughs> <laughs> even, if they, even if you go there not during the fly-in, yeah. just to go there, uh, you know, in the summertime, yeah, you see that museum, and they and if you go on the weekend, they got the Ford Tri Motor there, and they take yeah, the Ferrari. They take the Ferrari Tri Motor. One thing I think maybe people around here don't even know: Bay Ridgely has a contest every year in Hampton Beach. Hampton Beach is right on the water, real deep. A mile from where his contest is, there's a Piper Cub Museum, and they are restoring between I would guess 10 to 12, maybe 15 Cubs. The frames are in motors, frames. They give welding lessons. There's certified guys showing how to do dope and how to do motors and how to, and they build them right from scratch to the original prints. You can build one without ever buying a part from my proposal. And as you look outside, Carlos Serra took a ride to us, and the guy let him fly the plane. Now Carlos told me, true story, on the way to the club. I was a pilot in Angola. I can hear him still. I took one lesson. The guy said, don't fly out over the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Three hours later, I almost ran out of gas. I saw land again. <laughs> anyway, the guy took him for a ride, and uh, we videotaped it. And uh, if I found out later, Carlos does have an Angola pilot's license. You know what that's worth? <laughs> he showed it to the guy, and I could hear the guy almost fell off the <laughs> Yeah, And he has a picture of him when he's like geeky and 15, you know, like a computer nerd. <laughs> And the guy let him fly the plane. So that's that's kind of cool. But if you ever get up to Hampton Beach or you're in that area, that little museum, they let you walk around. They can't wait to like get you involved. Come on in. Let me show you. We're welding a part. Guy's working on a motor. And he's grinding pistons. And they're just like I guess it's no different than model plane. Um, maybe and I would be unrealistic. November first weekend in November will start what we normally have done in the winter. Anybody's everybody's invited to come over. Monday night, hang out, laugh at Robert, laugh at me, who you know is to the table. Uh, bring something to work on. Have pizza, buy pizza. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But most of the time, Al, I think, is a prime candidate. You can not only have fun, but you can teach other people in that environment, same as at the field. Now, Al is a perfect example. I want Al to come by and give me some monocle lessons. I don't know how to monocle. And George, George, I don't know either. George monocles, but I think he knows like minimum stuff. He doesn't know how to do any of the real nice stuff. Uh, and anybody that wants to bring something down to demonstrate for other people, we always put it on video. And then if somebody a year later wants to see Brian Kiefer, we're doing checkup boarding on Jim Damarello's Batman Master, we have it. So you have like six, seven hundred tapes of all the adventures of, we have your whole plane on. I'll bet, I'll bet we have everything but maybe one hour of both that whole plane on tape. Um, I'm a little bit skeptical about asking people. And I, and I remember the turning point being when I met Harold. And he just said, come on over. It's not hard. I went to High Ridgefield Park High School, and he worked by the post office. He, his house was next to it. And I just went down and I said, yeah, put up for a show. Show me, show me, show me, help me, help me. And a year later, I flew with the Nats, and I was fifth in junior. So, I mean, I really felt that was that was the turning point of like building ringmaster, 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 ringmaster. None of them ever got better or lighter or nicer. And and all of a sudden, I was building an obler of all things. And wow, it was straight. Wow, you mean you you, know, you hollow these parts out? I mean, you're not tree trimmers. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Cassell told me that you, you guys know this is true. Jimmy Cassell brought his first. John Latavio, you know, the beautiful Falcons, he used to make the orange ones. He brought up the Richard Thomas side view, never realized there was a front view. So did the block. <laughs> Every block! The wheel pads were square. The wing pads were square. This <laughs> call is Stevie is telling me some of his stuff. He's a wild man. Now today, the one thing I wanted to try to do. Hi, <coughs> the project that I'm going to be starting here. We'll put a little bit of it on this tape. The project is that I want to make a 40 size cardinal for John Brodak's motor 
the the airfoil that I want to use, I want to use the Cardinal airfoil. Now, believe me, a lot of time and development went into this airfoil, and it's I'm not going to abandon this airfoil for anything. But what I wanted to try to do, I wanted to lay out the wing. I've already sent you on the the drawings for the side view of the fuselage. I wanted to lay out the wing today, and what I wanted to do, I thought this would be kind of an unusual way to do it, but it'll probably work well, and of course we'll be building a test model to test this theory out. I want to take the last the last ribs, in other words what I'm going to eliminate is from the big cardinal, which is a 700 inch plane, I'm going to eliminate the three center ribs, the biggest and thickest ones, and use the tip ribs. Now I know what that's going to do is basically give me a plane that's between 600 and, until I figure this out, 600 and 650, which will be a real nice size. Now if this wing works out, one of the advantages I have is I already have the ribs laser cut, so I don't have to go back in and reprogram everything, pay that setup charge. And John, of course, if he decides to make a kit from this, he can just copy the ribs. But the point is I'm starting with a proven airfoil. This is not an experimental thing. I'm not you know, taking a Thunderbird airfoil or some other airfoil that belongs to somebody else. This is, this is really uh, right off the 51 Cardinal plans. And I thought of a lot of different ways of doing it. I was going to try to make the wing thinner. I didn't want to do that because what that does with a thin wing, you wind up having to build a plane very light. And I thought another choice I have is just like the Cardinal kit, the big Cardinal kit, I could then make two sets of optional flaps. One for supposing you knew you were going to make the plane nice and light. That would be one choice. And the second choice would be if you knew, for instance, you wanted to put on one of these killer finishes or an Imran finish or something else that might or might not make it a lot heavier. Well, this will give you two choices. So I'm going to start out with a blank sheet of paper and I thought it'd be interesting to see if you follow through with me on this. And I don't, again, when you do these things, this is one of the things I haven't done before. Probably there's alternative ways, which would be leaving the end root and the center one out. That would give you the same thing, but I think for the purposes that we're, we're basically trying to make a plane, it's very simple to build, extremely simple. I want people like Robert Sabatino, who's shown interest in this project already, to be able to come over and in one night build a wing. Now that means, number one, the ribs had better be accurate. Laser cutting always does that for you. The wood had better be good. Using 332nd wood instead of 16th, there's a little bit of a weight penalty, but there's an ease penalty that makes it very easy to build a wing. Another thing I can do is if I want to experiment and make just a little bit more wing displacement, I can use all the sheeting 332nd instead of 16th. Anyway, it's going to give me a lot of choices for a test model, basically working off proven ribs. And what I'm going to try to do is just set the ribs apart. Now on a Spitfire, I believe, I'm going to have to go over and measure one. I believe Joe used two and a half, two and three eighths. But I want to lay it out so the ribs, because they're a little bit thicker, and because the airfoil is a little bit thicker, I don't really need to use two inch rib spacing. I can space the ribs a little bit further apart. Again, the idea is there'll be less ribs. Each rib will be a little stiffer. Possibly we can even gain in the fact that the wing will be easier, quicker. I don't know until I build one, but, but this is a direction I want to explore. Again, most of what I've been doing lately is based on trying to make this stuff easy to make over and over and to help entry level and just slightly above entry level people to be able to make these models. And of course we have the whole video already on Mike Kajeski making this wing. That's real. That's in the bank. Mike's wing is beautiful. It came in underweight, in fact. And that plane will be getting finished here soon. But, but I've thought about this a lot. I really tried to figure out exactly how I wanted to do this. And again, when you're making up a new design, if you can use a lot of proven parts, I think one of the things that happens is you get, you're way ahead of the game as opposed to ripping out a piece of paper and start drawing new airfoils and figuring taper angles, rake angles. I know this wing will work. And I think this will be the good heart of we want to design this plane specifically for John Brodak's K&B motor. That, motor. that motor is a little bit heavier than an FP or a Fox. And the idea is the nose will be a little bit shorter. We'll have a wing, I hope, 
we're going to finalize this around 600 square inches so it'll be a little bit bigger than an oval a little bit smaller than the the whole array of 46 uh, ships that come in at 650 or 670 somewhere in that range so we're, I thought you'd enjoy seeing how I laid this out and I'm sure this is going to change from time to time to time and it's so important to build a prototype first get out there but while we still have a little bit of weather get out there and build the thing and see at that point in time if for instance if if the plane comes out heavier than the wing wants to carry it I can add one more rib or I can use and think of how tricky this is now you know you know that I you know what I know and I know that I know but I don't know if I know that I know that you know but anyway the point is one of the things we'll have an option of doing is if we build a prototype model and if Robert builds one and the wing isn't comfortable carrying that amount of weight I can substitute one of the tip ribs with one of the root ribs in other words I can just in effect leave out an end rib and add one in the middle leave two out add two so I can have a sliding scale wing where it can get thicker and bigger more cubic displacement at the same time and again this is what I've been thinking about for so long is it almost would equate to be a variable wing plane that I can make the wing thicker thinner longer shorter adding ribs taking ribs it really gives me a choice it almost gives you an infinite choice in wing displacement and if the first model flies real well terrific but if it doesn't I'll have that infinite choice I'll just leave out rib 11 and add rib 1 so that the whole wing in effect will get thicker or thinner and if you don't think that's a stroke of genius one of the things from my days in the auto industry is Ford would always try to make an alternator that fit a Mercury and fit a Ford and fit an Escort and fit interchangeability of parts was always a key thing so being we already have these ribs and we already have them we just have them in bags over there think of how much the time saving is as opposed to opening up a bag and dropping out a set of laser cut ribs as opposed to sitting down with a knife or having to go about some other way to make a test model and it it really I think it's a stroke of genius in fact I'm sure it is why should I be humble anyway let me get busy laying this out I laid out all the parts numbered each one I'm not going to be using the three center ones. Not for right now anyway, until I lay this out. Now believe it or not, hey, I didn't realize this. Joe has spaced the ribs on the Spitfire and Seafire project at three inches. And we know this wing was just peachy keen. So maybe what I'll do is I'll lay this out at, at maybe, oh, I'm going to try it at two and a half. And I can go to two and a quarter, two and three quarter. But see how many options I have now just by having those laser cut ribs. And we know these wings worked out fine. We know all of them, they were just fine. But how many options you have when you, ha when you can start with a proven wing design? And by the way, that's the same airfoil that's used on the Spitfire and Seafire, just a photo enlarged version of it, pretty much. And the first thing I wanted to do, I wanted to lay it out. I laid out the trailing edge, I guess before I even started the tape. I laid it out completely parallel to the edge of the glass, so now I can use a T-square to do all my drawings. Now, a couple problems. I'm not a professional draftsman. I don't pretend to be. It's not even worth, you know, assuming I'm going to get a, a final drawing. This will have to go either to John Brodak's draftsman or Pat Johnson. But I wanted to just lay it out. What I am real good at is laying out, blocking out, getting everything ready, and trying to figure out exactly what I want to do. Now, one of the problems is I want to get to the center of the plane, and I want to find out where exactly the profile fuselage is going to lay right in the middle. So I'd want to put a double rib right in the center. That's number one. I'll double up on that rib. And then I'm going to try to lay this out in three-inch spacing since we've done that on a spiffer, and this, by the way, this is a lot smaller of a wing, it's 100, 140 inches smaller than a Spitfire, so I'm hoping that's going to be one of the things, again, this is the option you have, and if you enjoy doing this kind of designing, this is handy, by the way, having a little calculator, laying this out, this is one of the ways of, I guess, I guess it's a way that I'm not going to take credit for inventing, but one way of using some of the proven parts we have, to come up with a much smaller wing, but one that we really hope will work the first time out. Now, next thing is I'm going to take the T-square and draw in all the rib lines. 
And it's also give me another choice of building on a rod. And we know that way works excellent. Should I say excellently? We know that works well. So if I lay these out, Again, there's an awful lot of ways to design an airplane. I'm sure, I'm sure there's more scientific ways. I'm sure there's uh, more high-tech ways, but, but this is one way. I'm gonna have to really believe that this should work well the first time out, and that's what I'm hoping is gonna happen, is that I'll have something that I can really use the first time out. I won't have to build five or 10 of these to figure out exactly how I wanna make it. And the whole purpose of this wing is to generate lift. And I want to generate it with smaller square inches, but more cubic displacement. But I'm just not, just not taking a stab in the dark here. I'm really hoping that because most of this stuff has already be, been built and flown, another side benefit of a thicker wing, as opposed to a thinner wing, is you gain rigidity, just in the design itself. Uh, I really, had, whenever I do a drawing like this, I always, I really have a lot of admiration for people like Bob Martens or Pat Johnson. When you can do this kind of really nice, neat drafting, boy, I really envy you. I'm not so good at doing this. In fact, I always have to fudge my way through it, but I've been thinking about this idea for a long time. This is the first time I've ever really put it on camera. I've shared it with a couple of people. And I'm hoping it's just going to elevate the performance that's available to people that only want to build, let's say, a profile model that's very, very easy to build, that you don't need a foam wing for. You don't need the expense of a foam wing. This should be a lot more economical than doing a foam wing. And yet still have all the performance of a full-size stunt ship. I've thought about it for a long time. and exactly. I've been thinking about it for longer than I want to admit. But I think this is going to be a viable way of doing it. I hope, anyway. Again, whenever you have what you think is a brilliant idea, it's always a good idea to run it by a couple of people that you trust their opinion. And this is an idea I've run by quite a few people that I really do value their opinion and their feedback. And if you're checking out the video and you have some feedback or ideas, please let me know. It's getting very, very difficult to get foam wings. I really can't design anything around a foam wing anymore. And I, and I hope that changes in the future, but, but this will eliminate the whole need for a foam wing. Now I pretty much can just lay out each one of the ribs in position and get an idea that I've, I've got this accurate. Okay, this worked out, geez, just better than I ever thought it would anyway. And I'm really excited about the idea that this gives me so many options. I can leave the, the ribs doubled up in the middle, or I can make a <laughs> make three of them even if I want to, or use one, or use none. There's a lot of choices here, a lot of choices. And this should be a really, really efficient wing. I want to use three to two flaps, three inches in the middle, two inches at the tip, and it'll allow me to make some pretty slick looking wing tips too by the way and still be well within the range that I hope this is going to be just an appropriate power for uh, the Brodak 40. And again I hope you're enjoying following through with this. This takes time. Okay I laid in the leading edge, the spars. Next thing will be to just lay in the flaps. I can even use the same, since we're trying to make this a cardinal, use the same shape on a tip. Now I had to do some of the calculations for the wide flaps and the thin flaps, and I made a template up for that. Now I want to take, this is my rough outline drawing, I roughed in where the bell crank would be. The reverse bell crank, of course. Now I'm just trying to look at this from every angle before I make 
I lay another piece of mylar right on top of this and make kind of a final drawing of it. Now, a rough calculation with the big, the non-curved tips. It's 622. And I'm thinking that's going to be real close to being right. Now, another thing, because this is a thick wing, we won't need the double sheeting in the middle of the wing. That's another advantage. Should be all standard size wood, three inch blocks or and or whatever that's going to wind up being. Three to two tips, quarter inch. Again, blocks, quarter inch squares, quarter inch square on a trailing edge. And of course, I've got one drawing tape right on top of the other one, so I could make a rough copy of it. I want to send a copy of this right off to John Brodak. And the rest one, I'll try to do some little use as a building detailing uh, drawing. Yeah, it all shapes up pretty quickly. What I like to do though is I always like to lay out the tail just for a concept drawing, just to get a look. One of the things I always find I like on a straight line stunner is equal curvature to tips. Kind of the same plan form, the same look. I think this will be one really slick looking plan. Anyway, I'll get this out in the mail to John. Now you can see here we are, beautiful northern Jersey. Leaves everywhere. Last of the mums are blooming. We're on our way up to the Circle Burner Field. This is going to be the last contest of the year. The season will be ending by this afternoon, and looks like we have some nice weather. Now, only speaking for myself, of course, this is the time of year I like the best. The flying is nice and cool. The motors run <coughs> like that Chrysler Hemis. The flannel shirts always feel good. You start getting a final picture in your mind of what you're going to be building next for the next season. And I've got things spinning in my head and tricky Cardinal Wing 40 ships, another Spitfire, maybe another Nobler. A lot of stuff to dream about. Anyway, the tree lined streets are now the leaf raking streets. And Rutherford is a leaf raking man's heaven. Now, if you've never been in this part of the country at this time of year, the leaves are changing. All the flannel shirts are coming out of the closet. Uh, it's just, it's a heck of a time. My personal favorite time. I don't like the summer heat. And we should have a good turnout. The weather looks really nice today. Oh, we're one of the first ones here. This is unusual. They don't even have the coffee on yet. Oh, the coffee tastes so good on a day like today. So good. Even bad coffee. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Today's a scale day, right? Junkers. I hope so. <laughs> Junkers. You hope so. I hope so. <laughs> Oh, it looks like it's going to be a beautiful sunny day. Look at the leaves changing colors. They're setting up the carrier deck. It's nice to get here early before anybody's flying. Now everybody's starting to wander in here now, little by little. Oh, they're all starting to drift in here. Hey, it's still... All right, Pat, let's have a show and tell. You gotta put your money where your tripod well, is. Only a thousand dollars for this. Look at this. <laughs> Good morning. Everybody. Hello, Robert. How's it going? Look at the motor man in there. Okay. I got all the height adjustment with the legs. I yeah, that's good. Ramp. I got all the movement. That's the same tripod that I just bought. Yeah, but mine's gonna have an airplane on it. The yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then mine will have a nicer airplane. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah, I see that. I That's a good idea. I motion, you know, I mean, okay. I, can, I can do anything I want with it. So if, when it comes, yeah. I can stay in the plane up in front of me. If I lower yeah. it down and work on, you know, Let's and do any picture. Huh? 
course, it's tough spray out here. If he's so damn smart, how come he ain't rich? <laughs> he can't even afford pants. We're all That's sitting here with. We, we figured that. My oh. brother-in-law works at private. Look, I can even, you know, boat the angle there. You like that one. <laughs> Second place. My brother. All right. I'm gonna retire it. This is that was it. You're gonna. Re Today's the last day of the no, contest. Well, to that I retired that last. Oh, week. you took the big one here today. Yeah. Oh, okay. We were starting to get some tail flutter, even in calm. So I figured yeah, this thing must be so yeah. oil soaked. Time. Why don't you it. offer it to the museum out in the I just said that. They said forget it. It's so goddamn crowded. It's oh, like they uh, wouldn't know where to put it. Yeah, yeah, I heard that too. Yeah, yeah, I heard so that. I guess it's only get more room. The needle valve. Not many people have a 30-year-old plane that can still win contests with. Hey, call us. Pond boy. Pond boy. The fish are sleeping. Oh boy, you got to wake them up in the morning. Listen, my objection to doing this is, years ago, several people had these kind of gizmos where it mounts by the, the motor. Mm -hmm. And years ago, the vogue thing was to build a 60 ship with 64th plywood and cut the mounts all up. When you have a thin airfoil, you need to make the plane as light as possible. Mm -hmm. You have a thick airfoil, it's less important. Now what they would do, they would bolt the plane on here and and go have dinner and come back and the tail would be two inches down then the nose would be two inches down and by the time you were done the cowling never fit back on a plane so when i saw that three or four times now that doesn't happen if what you have that? 16 plywood what about if it's standing up like so that you go to work on it you bring it down it's better as long as it's not a diving board picture what the, if this is sitting here and you're sanding back here and that's or if you just build a plane like a human being with 16th doublers you don't have to worry about well, that. I'm but if you have these like skimpy nose construction, if you're building, boing, building planes that are going to come in 70 ounces or less anyway, you aren't going to operate like a lumberjack around them. I mean, no. You no. have to proceed with caution, right? When you put the play on here, does this thing, is it nice and steady or does it? Yeah, but there's a way you can, I can take a... Uh, you I can could duct tape the, a brick on each leg. That would probably take, help. Uh, yeah. plates, weight plates. Yeah, all right, okay, like a weightlifter right, plate. slip on there and they, right. they will hold Yeah. It. But I've had an airplane, I haven't finished anything, I'll put a Skylark on it that I'm working Yeah, that's a, that's a usable idea. And, and, you know, I can get all my height. And this is the vice that you can buy from Sego. Right. It's a hobby vice, right. kind and of then, vice. And yeah. then the uh, camera plate that comes with this, you know, right. what I did was right. you know, go with that. Next thing you got to do is devise one for a B-17. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how big you could get with it, but I know <laughs> what I... We went out and had pizza Fortune one day. Vice. Listen, this is a true story in the plane. I won't mention any name. The plane was here. We went for pizza, we came back, it was down here. The next morning it was here, and finally, it's you could look down much. the nose, you could see the inclines it were bending. Much. What about what? the mouth? Yeah, 64th, ball, 64th plywood. Years ago, that was the Vogue thing. Nobody realized you just make the airfoil thicker and you can make if the plane heavier. If I had heavier. the airplane mounted in there and I walked away from it, I would turn it up like that. So, so yeah. No this, after the fact, this is all good, but yeah. first you have to learn. You don't do that. <laughs> but, but with this being the way it is, I can... Yeah. yeah. Now, I that's... Mean, that's definitely better than putting it in a vice. You have any, more range of motion. I can sure. Get any angle I want to. Yeah, it's it. good. That's and and I noticed that the finishing friends that are sold like the going vices that leaves you coming off of a tank of a table where you're you know you got that dead end right. There. And right. you can only go this way with the airplane. Right. Ask John DeTavio the other thing. He had one of these things. And, and somebody walked. Off. Somebody walked in the house and walked past, caught the rudder, and poof, that was the end of the plane. And I've, I've heard See, because if it's on a table and you hit it, it moves. Yeah. And we're used to walking into it and having it move. But if it's attached, you're not used to having a plane attached. So when you grab it, if you're not, it's like... Well, I learned one thing too, Wendy. You don't put a heavy toolbox in the back of your truck with a loose airplane. No, you always put the plane... <laughs> listen, you always <laughs> put that... Good day, tip. Four of them up in there. The plane always <laughs> goes as far back as you can. Because the odds are better you're going to hit somebody than somebody's going to hit you. That would have been good to show like at a stunt form. This is the kind of stuff they should have at a stunt form. Easy to do, cheap. Practical stuff. I mean, yeah, the stand costs 50 bucks. Yeah, I just I bought one of those. About 18 dollars for this. Yeah, under 100 bucks for the whole thing. Uh, this, this is just, this is just like that, for that's just an aluminum plate that I bought at this. Uh, uh, now this is good. See, Bill Both just pulled in. He owes me money. Watch, he won't talk to me all day. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee he won't come over all day. <laughs> I wouldn't either. When I have something he wants, he's like a magnet over here. Hey, look at the guys from Philly, the bums. Your daughter's little plane? Yeah. That's one I, I built and just had hang on the wall for a bit. It's a little chipmunk. Profile chipmunk? Yeah, it's a profile magician. It's got the chipmunk paint job. Yeah, yeah. I got it from. I copied that off. It's a nice little plane. I, you know, it was my first thing I ever painted. And I didn't have, I did it all with a, with a brush. Well, this was brush. 
Now that you have a finishing friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be in the front row forever. Hard, hard as it may be, I've even made a new human friend down there. Oh, wow. Why don't you get seat? The trick is, when you're in a place where there's nobody flying stunt, you create friends. You find guys that you, you'd be they're surprised. interested. You'd be surprised how many people will bite. You'd be surprised. Uh, what did you bring? A flight streak? Well, a the, dolphin? Yeah, I'm trying to get rid of that stuff. Oh. And I'm trying to get rid of that four runner too. That's set up for a Super Tiger 46. Just put it by Bill Boss truck. <laughs> you ought to buy that. How much is that? Let me see. It's set up for a Super Tiger 46. Did he, say, did he ask you what it was set up for? I heard him say, how much is it? <laughs> what the hell are you deaf to? <laughs> 40 bucks. 40 bucks, buy it. What a 40 deal. bucks, what a deal. The wheels are worth more. <laughs> Built by Pat Travers, that doubles the value. <laughs> Shit, that, that's <laughs> depreciation. Maybe you can right go to Willowbrook and buy a pair of pants. <laughs> and that's just a little heavy. Could that go a little 40 heavy? bucks, Zambelli will buy. <laughs> hey, Steve. How you doing? What's up, guys? World famous. Where's my Strega that, wine? That, that, that needs <laughs> I thought, I thought every year Strega wins the Reno, we get a free bottle of wine. What's the deal? You don't know what happened this morning. <laughs> oh, my God. Is I it videoable or unvideoable? I had a check for you. Oh, the check. I got to shut the camera off. <laughs> That's what Boss always said. <laughs> no, seriously. You ever want to get Boss out of town, just make all your money. And... Not a and we don't know what happened to it. Man. To do what Brian Kiefer does, throw him out the back of a car at 50 miles an hour. All right, you want to mix some epoxy up. Let's see, he had a bad day. That's okay. It's, it's that one that's we're more worried about. Okay. Right there. That we can you have a let's mix it up right now. Five minute epoxy. Yeah. Okay, let's do it right now. Put it in the sun. <laughs> let's go down by the carrier circle and get it in the sun. <laughs> you have some alcohol and paper towels and stuff too? Yeah. I brought some epoxy just. You need uh, No, I got it. You got it? Okay. You don't want to do that with CA. That's a better job for epoxy. Mix it up and then we'll we'll babysit this a while and then we hook up the Ray Breda linkage. Hey, now it's a warbird. It really is a warbird. It's been broken up in the front, broken back here. Get some when you live by the epoxy, you die by the epoxy. Uh. You drying up yet? No, don't put any force on it. Leave it. Make sure it's in the sun. Face it into the sun. When put it, put it on the ground. Yeah, put it out here, but make sure, make sure the sun is hitting the epoxy, because it's cold out here now. No, I just leave it till it dries up. You gotta fix the, the Ray Brittle linkage. That's start to fill up now. Oh no, not Steve White. Oh no. Oh no. Did you buy that? Did you buy that from Pat Travers? Yeah. Okay. You don't ever try to claim builder to model rule. We know who built that plane. <laughs> no. But... All right. What else is exciting? Where's Banjock? Come on, showtime. <laughs> Man. That's why nobody rides with him anymore. You know, I, actually, I guess it's because Randy had to bring that plane because everybody yeah. comes the other way now. No one even, even John says, I'm not following those guys at all anymore. John's had a whole yeah. anymore. Did he learn his lesson or? John's had it with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, they get like brought it up. We went by yesterday morning. I heard. <laughs> I felt I couldn't go back to bed. <laughs> where, where do you live? It was better than sex, believe me. <laughs> Until it's 9.35 it goes through Rutherford. Uh, it went through this morning. In fact, when I leave the contest, it comes back at 6. I may get down there and get some footage of it. Yeah, the trouble is, with the return trip, you can't predict this. Yeah, when they run out of coal, you know, then they put the diesels on it. <coughs> did you ride on one yet? I took the ride, yeah. I, I videotaped the whole ride. Yeah, I did the ride out and I took the Phoebe Up to Port Jervis? No, I come, I wanted to scratch. Oh, oh, oh. That's the ride. You go over that viaduct there. Moon the viaduct, yeah. Oh, oh man. He stops on the top. 
looking for a photo op? Yeah, mean? and he shoots the steam out, and you get a rainbow like you'll never see. Wow. And then he gives you the woo-woo. There was five, at least 500 people on the side of the mountain by Moomba. Yeah. Oh, man, the flash bulbs are going off, and uh, he's blowing that, smoke, clearing the stuff. You know the funny thing about it? When I was in service, I traveled to go overseas on the old steam. Yeah, 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 yeah. I took the Santa Fe chief on a military deal to California. Yeah. You don't realize what you missed. Ah. Uh, no, I know what like I missed. Steam, boy. Steam and rails. They go through Rutherford and he holds that whistle on for the whole the state. <laughs> Great. Well, we're gonna so you're into buying models now? I got a lot of stuff for sale. How much money you got? So the problem is I don't have a house to take. Uh, give, I got a the only airplane loan. that he's interested in. <laughs> the airplane he's interested loan. in have to be powered by Mopar. <laughs> you got one of those uh, rebuilt cars here today? You want your, uh, how many of them you got? Just, this one? Just that the Chrysler? One. Yeah, that one I'm... I'm I keep, that's actually... Oh, the, somebody else the blue one. one. I was a, it's a green one that I want to buy. Oh, yes. How much are they worth, legit? That one, he, he, the maroon one, he refused sixteen thousand dollars. It looked pretty nice to me. The green one. I have a friend in California, John Poppy, that's really into these classic cars and stuff. I sent him the videos and stuff. Give me some video on these car shows you guys go to. I, um, I know. You know, <laughs> anybody that drinks coffee out of here, what does the uh, antidote go for today? <laughs> Did this meet the sanitary code? Yes. Yeah, we took the bugs out. Is this the center? The you, you took a fish net and took out the dead goldfish or whatever's in there? Oh, man. you gotta have guts to drink out of this thing. I'm telling you. You should see the size of the cockroaches. <laughs> Look at the stuff floating and drooling. And, oh. I love it. This is worse than being back in Vietnam. <laughs> Woo! The best way. I wanted to enter the Spitfire, the Seafire, something in scale today, but they talked me out of it. They said it. I shouldn't do that. And I guess they're right. Got a prowler here, painted up like uh, an Air Force jet. Pretty good turnout in scale here. You just heard through the grapevine, Kyle Freeman threw, threw Woody's Cardinal into a fuel jug and busted it all up. We'll be fixing that on Monday night. Kyle, you're not supposed to be there. Hey, kind of a neat thing. Kind of cool, flat finish. We'll try to get some pictures of the scale guys doing their thing, if we can. Does that mean you have to pay him or he pays you? <laughs> he pays who for this guy? Okay. Billy Simons would roll over in his grave. Uh, He's got the old turning, oh, it's so beautiful, it's so cold. <laughs> ah, Lampion's flying already. Look at the leaves. And you got socks on today? I want to see how tough you really are. <laughs> I didn't know you never wear socks. Was that like a, a habit from the old country or what? I'm sick of this damn thing being on your bed. I want to see the fillet peel up. Flip it over. Bubble, bubble, peel. Hey, that stuff really is solid. That that probably make good glue even. Oh, you should see. I use I use it for pillow bedding and motor. Really? Yeah, you guys talk about your crush proof aluminum pads. I guess I, when I used to uh, uh, do fire fiberglass bedding with firearms, that's where I learned about that stuff. But where it's you, good stuff. When where you drill the holes for the for the motor to be mounted for the mounting. Right. I open them up to a quarter inch and I fill them with these and make. Oh, and then put the screw holes right through it. Drill, makes it impervious. To, yeah, it's that's real, a good idea. It's a solid pillar. It gives you that much more crush proof resistance. Yeah. I mean, it's really. I use it in a lot of ways. Now it looked like good stuff. I'm sure Adam Usko will find some uses for it that we haven't even thought of too. And uh. As far as where to get it from, you're going to have to turn to the box for that. Yeah, the information's on the box. Oh! Look at this nobler! Oh my god! Look at this! Gee, I didn't... I didn't know the superstars were going to show up. Yeah, superstars. What's this? Where's Dwayne? Uh, still sleeping. 
He sent me some pictures of that air show out by your house. Wow, dude. Yeah. Uh, Who's Nobler? This is your Nobler? Yeah. Oh, that looks nice. That's, I've been working on, I was working on both of them. At the yeah, time. yeah, yeah. This and isn't rubbed out yet, though. That's a Geeski Nobler, right? That's yeah. a Geeski, yeah. See, I like, I like that airfoil better than the, the uh, Aldridge. That's a thicker airfoil. It's thicker, yeah. yeah. Where's your handle, Carlos? Is that from a chipmunk kick? One. Sig kick? Yeah. I, for some reason, I thought that that stab was solid all the way across. No. That it didn't break there in the middle. No, it's it's two pieces. Uh, okay, I didn't hear that. Yeah, matter of fact, there. Well, it's a couple of noses on both of these. Yeah. Now, is this the is this the, uh, the stock diameter for the for the one and three quarter ounce tank, or you got two? No. No, when I built the crutch, it uh, widened the nose on it. So I went, I've got a full size tank in there. Yeah. And I built it so that it's not contained. Oh, I can that's take the nice. Tank in nice and, uh, noble, huh, Bob? Yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Very, very nice. It is. It's a nice one I've seen in a long time. And she only weighs 48 hours. Borelli, eat your heart out. <laughs> yeah, that's hey, how's Borelli doing? Is he coming? No, I don't think. He gave up flying for the year. He's done? Where are you having? That's a FP40. Oh, Flip that over again, away. Rudy. Flip that over. You know, Wendy? What's that? He gave everything away. No, that'll do it. He gave his Misty away. He gave... I know he gave this stuff away. That's real nice and neat, even the front. I see two things that get my attention, I'm, and I'm only going by what I've heard on Wendy's tape. Is this your unit flame vent? Yeah. Because on the tape, I, I remember you, and I followed those directions, keep it to mm. the inside. Inside, the right. Should be on the inside, right. higher than the tank, if you want it to be the most effective. And and see on the other I side. I ran out of room in it. Yeah, oh no, I, that's so. if you have all the choices. Yeah. Well, well it's like if you have a choice in life, do you want to be rich or poor? Well, sometimes you don't have any choice. You're just yeah. alive, is enough. <laughs> <laughs> the real pants are nice that you can get them off too. That's a good yeah. idea. That's neat. That's an excellent. Yeah, Ken Thompson did something similar. That's a good idea. Clean stuff. Colors. You got high tack and light tack. Yeah. And it's called clean edge paint tape. You don't have to put clear along the leading edge. Oh, wow. it's, it's wild stuff. Oh, shit. Really? Yeah. <laughs> no. no. Everything was white was painted. Everything was back masking. Old was painted. Back masking. And then the gold. Tom McGregor's look like a real world win look alike. What do you think? Just the tank. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Looking into the tank. This is? Yeah. That's a... Uh, I can't put it in this house. I'm not talking about PAs. I'm just talking about his reworks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I changed my needle valve assembly. You put an OS Max needle in there? Uh, no, I got a Super Tiger in there now, and now it's working. Oh, hello. I put 40 that's in there now is not Randy Smith. That's a loop. The one VCR locked up solid, Carl, so I can't get the tape out of it. It's nothing compared to my plane not starting right now. <laughs> so I put the jinx on your plane. You give me VCRs, I can't get the tape out, I give you a battery that doesn't work. You got any lighter fluid? That's what it needs, a drop of lighter fluid in cold weather like this. It's absolutely loose. It's supposed to start right away. Yeah, this is a lighter fluid day, baby. I don't get a bump. I don't get a bump. The battery good, Carl? Yeah, we just... Try. It's cold here. Hey, it's wet too. It's cold and it's wet. Yeah, yeah it's damp. Sounds like a song. Pack. <laughs> Do me a favor. Yeah, just grab it. Let that battery work. Huh? Prime it. Maybe you ain't got enough gas in it. Who knows? I thought we knew more than this. Lighter fluid, call us. Lighter fluid. You know, I had the lighter fluid in my old box. I don't have lighter fluid one. with me. There's the reason you don't have a glow plug. The glow plug's fine. Sure, the glow plug's fine. You have nothing in there. It's dry. Choke it. Don't be a wimp. I had to choke you mine. You did fill it up, right? Remember, Carlos? I had yeah. to choke the hell out of mine. I, yeah, it's I cold. Five or six chokes on. Look at your car. Your car needs the choke on, too. I'm dripping fuel all over the place. On that. And this is bubbling. What little finish there was it, those days, you know? What I like is when all the hair on your arms was missing from an alcohol fire. Ah. 
Oh, uh, here we go. Pat, hold that battery for him, huh? This what battery an usually, ordeal. This battery is usually very What an ordeal. Hey, all right. Let there be life. Let there be Carlos. Fix those VCRs. Whoa! We'll put that thing right in there. Okay, you're not done the... Okay. Sarah. Carlos used to be one flip, but now not one flip, Sarah. Feet are getting wet and damp. Whoa, what the hell is that? Anyway, the parking lot is totally full now. I think they're gonna, this is going to be near the end of the practice flights, and it really starting to look like a beautiful day. We got a, it looks like a pretty good turnout in scale. Had a good turnout at the little stunt form, mini stunt form that we had. Hope you picked up some little ideas, thoughts. Hope Ken learned how to use the camera, how to turn it on and off. Man that can build a nobler should be able to turn a camera on and off. Anyway. Yeah, it looks kind of dead right now. And this is a time at uh, Circle Burn is it can be dangerous to fly when you go through some funky kind of going through your own air here, especially on outside squares. It can be annoying. Yep. And it's reported Dan Van Jock will be here with the 25 foot wingspan flight streak for another demo flight. Certainly, that's a big, a nice lunchtime crowd pleaser all the time. And the guys with the scale shift, there's usually some exciting flying going on over there. Especially that twin looks like. That should be a nice one. But the most important thing is the weather. Once it warms up even another couple, maybe five, ten degrees, it'll be totally beautiful, pleasant, leaf turning, New England orange leaves on the tree weather here. People will start ripping off their coats and jackets. Maybe Pat Travers will put a pair of pants on. Maybe Don McGregor will put some socks on. Who knows?
Oh, Sarah. Uh, time for a cup of coffee. Oh, in the bed. Oh, man. Oh, you can fly Wendy's airplane in there, Kyle. <laughs> and we had the... Uh, you ruined the whole motel room compound and out this plane. You cleaned it up. One night I cleaned the room. You should see what built. Like, my wife said it smells like body shop. And she doesn't know what a body shop smells. Billy Simons buffed one of his planes out. They had to repaint the room when they were done with a buffing wheel. Whoa. They built this. this feel for our old guys. You can tell the airplane's nice and high. Don't yeah, have plans. <laughs> Do you have plans for this? This is basically a China doll. It's a China doll wing. Uh, it's Casal's moments. That's really what I did. I just took that, but of course he builds airplanes a lot lighter. <laughs> That's the understatement of the year, you know it? His were 60 ounces and they fell apart and this was like off the bench it was 75. You know, so. A little heavy. Watch your tail wheel, Bobby. You don't put a ding back there. The only person allowed to ding planes here is Kyle. Hey, I heard that. No! Oh, oh. I heard that. I heard They're going to call him Kyle. Don't be surprised in the newsletter to see Kyle D. Freeman. <laughs> Relentless Did you bring extra fuel with you? <laughs> Pat, the lesson here is he could have hey, listened get, to me right in the get, beginning, get, get, but get no. On, stand back there and get me on tape with this and say it's my latest ship. <laughs> <laughs> yours, yours looks prettier than this. Yeah. Oh, so, so, Mr. Travers, how long have you hero worshipped Bob Lampione and dreamt about holding his plane, his Nats winning plane? <laughs> yeah. I wish this was a Nats winning plane. Well, if you don't go, that kind of eliminates that possibility. It cuts the odds way down when you don't even go. I've, I've got the plans for the light wave. I have, I have avoided because of a fear building a wing mount of gear. Well, the truth is, he could have came to the Nats, but he has a hang-up. Oh. He buys CDs that he doesn't need. He's got $50,000 with <laughs> So when he goes home, instead of having a nice trip to the Nats with the boys, he's got this big CD hey, collection. Now, if they work, you're not going to know. Kyle's got the plane here. Here. Good chance I can leave. Because I needed to slow it down. I'd never flown a 60. was pulling my arm off. So we were at the practice part of Chicken Feet. So I said, let me get one more flight. So I changed the prop. I put a, from a 13.6 to a 13.5. Figured it would slow it down, but not realize it would pull it through the corner the same. So I pulled out the same way I normally would. And it dropped <laughs> There was the concrete. It's that it slid. I could hear it grinding down. I, he was there. I was ready to. Well, I was crying. I was crying. You, you can I be a man. Away, he I it. would cry too. You tore the canopy off, you right? The canopy, the rudder. The was, rudder. Yeah, that's right. You already had your appearance points. We'll get it to fly. <laughs> <laughs> Did we get it to fly? Yeah, yes. Yeah, and then I went and wiped out my plane. He wiped out his <laughs> So it shows you what I know. Oh, man, Don't listen to Wendy. Scary day. <laughs> yeah, that was. But you had fun. No, no, we did. Come on, it was great. You took all the kids out. The rules, Rudy. The rules favor planes you can do loops and stuff with. Yeah, that's you absolutely have a better an chance. Ship, so yeah. That's, it's no, even if it wasn't, the the rules are highly in favor of a plane. That's that has, that can do maneuvers. It's only 10% uh, scale stuff, and then the rest of it's flying. What the hell's going on over here? Hey, look. Who says those airplanes don't get Is that extra points? I think the bell crank's stuck or something here. What's going on? There we go. The only carrier loop plane of the day. Yeah, that's where the plastic is seen. I know. What I was going to say, next time, if you do a plastic one, take a piece of the same plastic and glue it underneath like a little doubler. Yeah. They always crack. That's what I had in there. As a fact, there's a piece of carbon fiber in there and fiberglass. Really? Oh, man. Well, you know, you can make this piece out, whole thing out of fiberglass. Yeah. That's an easy part to make. Yeah. But this, that makes me cry. I see that all the time.
Yeah, all the chipmunks I've seen have that. Yep. That plastic is not easy to attach. You do MEK to hook it together? Yeah. yeah. Flight streak is here. We're in for a show this afternoon. <laughs> Doesn't get a lot more realistic than that, Carlos. Don't you wish you were small so you could fit inside here while he's flying it? Yeah, go to New Hampshire, you can fly a big one. Just show him that Angola pilot's license, boy, and you're in. That's about as realistic as I think you can get it. And now I have to Is that the guy doing loops again back there or is a new guy?
Get over there. Sign us both up. All right. Sign us both up for a Red Baron fun fly. They can't complain about that. And tell them it's been in an accident. <laughs> Oh, Kyle's going to enter the Red Baron. Get some entry fees for the club here. The club's going bankrupt. This is John Saunders, and he's one of the up-and-comers, I really think. It's not going to be long before he's really right up at the top, if not the top, and be an expert, unquestionably. I've been judging, in fact, I'm going to judge him today. I'm judging advance, which probably means I won't get a lot of footage, but... Always have to pay your dues, as my wife would say. Always have to pay your dues. But anyway, we'll have a great time. The weather, I don't know how you could be unhappy with weather like this. You just have to be crazy to have something to complain about. Hey, you could be in Poland with no flush toilets, you know? Hey, you could be in... <laughs> Meaningful, meaningful dissertation on life here. Anyway, one of the things I really enjoy personally is seeing some of the people that years ago were intermediate and now advanced and working their way. John just happens to be one of them. Working their way to the top of advanced where it's only really a matter of personal decision and a matter of time when they will become experts. And if you count the people in the world of stun 